One of the purposes of marriage is raising godly seed. So it's not just having children for children's sake. It's raising godly seed. But I'm using all letter C's. So children, raising godly seed. Raising godly seed. Let's look at Malachi chapter 2 verse 15. If you have the NLT version, give me the NLT version. Can we read together, everybody? One, two, go. They say, what does he want? They say, what? Godly children. What does God want out of marriage? That's what they're saying. They say, what does God want? Want out of marriage. When God brings a man and a woman together, what does he want? One of the things he wants is godly children. Like I told you yes last Sunday, one of the one of the things God designed is to design is to disciple the world one family at a time. God's plan is to disciple the world what? One family at a time. Godly seed. What does God want? Godly seed. Why did he make you one? He said he wants godly seed. This is very important. This is very important. God, one of the purposes of marriage, one of the purposes why God created marriage is to raise godly seed. Listen, if God just wants seed, you don't need marriage to do seed. Because people are already giving seed everywhere. Somebody get what I'm saying? Oh, in places like America, in the black community, oh my God. Oh my God. You know I'm a counselor, man. The things I hear and see, I'll be, I'll be shocked out of my mind. I say, What? When people meet and they want to marry, they're asking how many kids you have. Not do you have kids, it's how many. So you will see somebody has five kids from five people. Five people. Five different kids. And he wants to marry somebody that has three kids from three people. So the issue is not seed. What they are talking about is what? Godly seed. There's a difference. You don't need marriage for kids. Everybody can have kids. Everybody's already having kids, as a matter of fact. But they're saying, listen, if you want to raise godly seed, it is better in the environment of marriage. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Not seed, but godly seed. Not seed, but godly, not just children. Godly children. Because just having children outside the confines of marriage is counterproductive. And this is not to judge anybody that's a single mom or single dad here. That's not what we're trying to do. I'm just giving you the facts, the way it is designed. Go and check the statistics with children that are single mom, raised by single mom or single dad. The statistics is not good. The statistics is not good. Again, as a counselor, we encounter people like that. You find out that one aspect of their life is not as developed as it should be. Listen, two people even raising a child is difficult work. Is somebody get what I'm saying? Parents in the house, do you, are you getting what I'm saying? Do you agree with me? When you have a husband and wife raising children, sometimes you're like, can we even sow these kids to church or somewhere? Just sow them as a seed. <laughs> raising children can be crazy. Is somebody going to say? <laughs> Is that what, I'm, that what I'm telling young people? Please marry quickly. I kid you not. It's very the men marry on time. This being 40 and not married doesn't make sense. So I can't find anybody. Oh, yeah, come. I'll just show you one person and you must obey. Because <laughs> there's something in your, in your mind blocking you. It's not that you can't say you can't find anybody. There are people. Just, there, there are things blocking you that we need to help you overcome. Marry on time, John. <laughs> Don't need to get all the money in the world. Just in the woman that's ready to partner with you. Say, but partner, this guest has this day. You know that money, they won't answer you. Is the type you're looking for, I've told you. You're looking for the ones you can't afford. There are many good girls that have a good job that are ready to partner with you if you can have sense. Many, many, I work them every day. Wear them every day. Forget. Don't say, this generation guess is the type you are chasing. You are following Slay Queen. Slay Queen will slay you. 
A girl is posting pictures of herself in hotel every day, posting pictures of traveling every day, posting private jet, and she has no reasonable work. Or let me say, no visible work. There's work, but it's just not visible. <laughs> She's working, definitely. You should know you can't afford that. Can you buy her cream? You can't buy her organic cream. Don't go and kill yourself. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Do you know that people in this country that earn 50k and are married? It's just you, the load you are putting on yourself. You want to live where you can't live. You want to drive what you can't drive. All you need to marry is a bed. That's what the Bible says. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed on the fire. As long as there's bed, be going. That's the only thing required. Because some part of your duty involves bed. Outside of that, you, can, you don't need furniture. Many of us that might, we didn't have furniture. That's the truth. We can't be furniture. You're entertaining guests. Tell them not to come. We don't even want to entertain guests. Entertaining guests means you still buy them time to drink. And if you know, we are not around. So where will you be around? We are not sure. Maybe from 2023. Check, check in again from 2023. Why are you entertaining guests? Many of us, when we started, our palace were empty. We sat on the ground, sat on the floor. That's how we all did it. Are you here, somebody? You need bed and stove. You don't even need gas cooker if you can't afford it. What's gas cooker? Gas is getting expensive every day. Buy a stove or firewood outside. That's the thing. I used stove. We used stove in my house when we got married. When I married my wife, in, 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 our, in our parents, in our family culture, when their daughters get married, they buy, they, the mother buys the, her, her kitchen things. You know, all the pestle, the mortar, everything, and pots, um, cooker, and everything. So they bought it for her. But when they, they gave her, we couldn't even afford the gas. We couldn't afford gas and all the piping to do it. So we just kept the things there. And the green stove, you know that small green stove? Some of you are too young to know, but there's one small green stove that poor people have. <laughs> if you don't laugh too much, you will know you are among. You are the one making them know. You are defending what nobody called you to defend. <laughs> so there's one small green stove. Like that, you buy, buy small kerosene, you can pour it inside and you, you use it. That, that's what we're using. And my wife wasn't used to it because she comes from where they're using gas cooker. So when she came and she was doing it, one day, thing blew. <laughs> my yellow wife became black. <laughs> and she sat on the floor, her hair went up like this. <laughs> I was laughing. I said, Who sent me to go and carry a so when people see us blessed today, you need to know where we are coming from. Nobody starts. The blessing comes after the marriage, not before. You see, that finds a wife, finds a good thing, and obtains favor. <laughs> the favor comes after. You are waiting for the favor to come before you marry. No, marry, then the favor will come. That's what scripture says. Marry on time. I can't be 35. You are still roaming around. At 35. Come on, come on. See, there are no girls in Lagos. Uh-uh. And now they said there's there are women all over the world. So you don't have to even wait until it, is, it must be in your locality. Is somebody get what I'm saying? Because the duties that are required of you as a father, you need, the Bible said, the wife of your youth. Both the duty, your duty as a husband and a father requires youth. <laughs> okay. I told you, I don't know if I said it in this service <laughs> last Sunday. I was, uh, my son was needed to learn how to ride bicycle because his sisters can ride and he cannot ride. So I, I had to make sure he knew how to ride. So um, Joshua was helping me teach him how to ride. And if you're teaching kids how to ride bicycle, it means you're going to hold the bicycle and jog with them as they're riding it. So Joshua was doing it one lap, you know, down the street back. So he was getting tired. I said, ah, let me help you do one. You rest. Let me do one lap. My brother, after I run with you, I said, come on, continue, come on, come on. <laughs> I nearly died. Eh? I didn't know running is that hard. <laughs> so this was all of you. You, 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 are, you are 40, you never even started. So it's here 80. <laughs> uh, I that's, what, that's what I want to do. At 80. At 80, only. <laughs> Start quick, John. Is the, the wife of your youth. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Start quick. I don't want to delay the ladies. They are ready. So, purpose of marriage 
raising godly seed. Godly children. Godly children. So, you can have children without marriage, but for raising godly seed, it requires a husband and a wife that love each other and that are showing that child what the love of God looks like. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? This is how God designed it. And you see, whenever we break what God designs, the results never come out quite the way God expects it. So that's why I said, check the statistics of children born outside wedlock. The statistics are not good. And like I said, even when we counsel people, we'll find out that some part of their lives are not developed because there's what a husband and a father provides for a child, very different from what a woman provides. This is why the Western madness of men and women are the same and all that is madness. Please do not subscribe to it in any shape or form because there are things women supply to a child, there are things men supply to a child. We must keep men and women different to supply those. The moment you say they are the same, then that child begins to get more and more confused. Some of the new, some of the qualities they need to learn, they will never learn it. This is why, you see, God doesn't want people divorcing and separating. This is why, if you know these reasons from the beginning, you enter marriage, you know, more, more deliberately. Not just jump in, then find out, oh, the marriage is not working, and you jump out. Those things affect children. This, these are statistics. It has nothing to do with me. Even the Bible has told us, but if you don't like Bible, go, just Google it yourself. Google it yourself. You see how divorce. Anybody in the practice in the field knows that. Divorce affects kids. And being raised by single parents affects kids. Most people, a large number of them are abused. Because it's very simple. If one person is raising the child, see, even in the animal kingdom, when two um, male and female animals come together, one, they lay egg, one must stay by the egg while the other one goes to hunt. That's how it works. Two of them can't go to hunt. Because the moment two of them stand up, predators will come and what? Eat the eggs or eat the young. So when only you are raising a child, you can't do all the things. By the time you will leave him to her to go and hustle, they will be abused before you come back. I had one of my daughters that was, she was abused by both male and female. Both driver and house help. A mother, very successful, very rich, but single parents. So you know how work does. She was abused by both house help and driver and everything. So she, she, <laughs> she had to deal with um, homosexual thoughts how to deal with addictions. How, so the statistics are not good. So if you are here watching me now and you are single, you need to know one of the reasons why I must marry is that I must raise godly. See, this means I must look for a godly partner. Are you getting what I'm saying? Two ungodly people can't raise godly seed. In fact, one godly partner can't raise godly seed. You need both. It's godly parents that will raise what? Godly seed. So it's one of the major purposes. God wants to spread... See, all the times you see God destroy the earth. <laughs> if you understand Bible and thank God for light is coming. Because when we were young, we thought God was just a very wicked and stern God. If you mess up, he can kill everybody. This is the God that wipes everybody out with flood. Then another time, wipes everybody out with fire. This God is terrible. No, all the times he had to wipe out the earth, it was out of love. It wasn't out of anger. Because they were spreading um, humans that would defile the earth. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? It's like when they do cancer surgery. When cancer is spreading, maybe in a woman's breast or somewhere, the leg order, you find out that the doctor said the best thing to do to save the rest of the body. We must cut off that part. That doctor cutting off that part, is he wicked? He's actually helping you. Am I correct? That's the highest form of love he can give you. Is to cut off that part so that the rest of the body will be saved. Every time God destroyed the earth, there was so much bad things being spread that he had to cut it off to keep save the rest. So the time that Noah, um, they destroyed the earth in times of flood, humans were sleeping, uh, was that kind of sleeping angels and things like that? That's, that was the instance. Yes, that was Noah. So um, they said angels or heavenly bodies were sleeping with women on the earth, so they were giving back to giants. So the earth wouldn't have been the way it is now if they didn't do that thing that time. God had to clear all, the, all, all of them to restart. Because then, heavenly bodies were saying they were having, and I don't even know how that is possible. There are a lot of things the Bible just doesn't want to bother us with the details. But if you read it, I don't know if DJ could, could have found it, but you would have seen it there. Is it showing? <laughs> he said, there were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, there were sons, the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children of them. The same became mighty men. Mighty men means giants, uh, which were of old. Men of renown just mean they were giants. They were heavy. So they were awkward. So imagine somebody um, like double the height of Shaquille O'Neal. 
and the size. You know, they, 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 and I don't know how, what else, what other qualities is. These guys were not just human. They were not human. And that would destroy the human race. If somebody get what I'm saying? So the right thing to do at that time was to clear all those people. So God didn't destroy the earth because he was angry. Same thing with the time of Sodom and Gomorrah. They had to destroy the earth with fire. What was happening there? You know the story. All the men were homosexuals. So gay parade didn't start today. It's not a new thing. Nothing new in the, on the earth. Gay parade is... So, so all the men... In fact, they said... Uh, um, um, when, when the angels um, that God sent to Lot came into the town, all the men... I mean, have you read the stories before? He said... Uh, 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 all the men came into the... They followed those people. He said, they called unto... Uh, I want to say all the men. I, 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 I'm wondering how... Uh, all the men... I don't know how many mil- thousands of men in the city. As in, they all knew they were homosexual. And they were all okay with it. Culture had accepted it. And they followed Lot. They went to Lot and said, we saw three men enter your house. Bring them out so that we'll sleep with them. They didn't say, okay, can we get their phone number? Let's talk to them. They wanted to rape them. And this was culturally acceptable. Do you understand? There was no problem. So, but before they lay down, that's the enter, before those three men laid down, it says, um, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, did what? Compassed the house round. Both what? They surrounded the house. Picture, guys. All the men in the city surrounded the house. Both old and young. He said, all the people from what? Every quarter. He said, and they called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men which came to thee this night? Bring them out unto us that we may what? Now, of course, you know in Bible, they don't say we want to know you. <laughs> it's not that uh, I want to check your profile on social media, no. Uh, those Bible, they don't say we want to know you. <laughs> uh, you understand? Know <laughs> uh, other versions would have made it clear. They, they wanted to have sex with this man. Next verse. Next verse. I don't know if you can stop because. Uh, See, Lot went, Lot went out the door unto them and shut the door after him. Go ahead, quickly, quickly. He said, and I said, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. Fast. He says, behold now, I have what? Two daughters, which have not known any man. How would they know man? There's not, not the men are sleeping with men. He said, I pray you, bring them out unto, I'll bring them out unto you, and do ye to them as is good in your eyes. Only unto these men do nothing. For therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. Next verse. And they said, shift. Stand back. And they said again, this one fellow came in to sojourn and he will, he will need to be judged. Now we will do, deal worse with thee. They said, so you, you will just come. You will judge all of us. They said, we will deal worse with thee than with them. And they pressed sore upon the man, even Lot, and came. Basically, they came to break the door. They wanted to come and sleep with the, forcefully sleep with the man. He even offered them his daughters. They said, we, we don't want women. So my brother, if... This thing was not curbed. <laughs> All men will be working with iron, iron shield because they can rape you at any point and anywhere. Am I correct? So the best thing to do at this time again was to clear all these people. So you see how God reasons. It wasn't out of hatred. It was out of love. If he didn't do it, all of us would be in trouble. All of us would be what? In big trouble. Your children will be able to go to school. They will be raped before they get to school. So, it's not, it's not talking about just one godly parent. You need two godly parents to raise godly seed. That's one of the reasons why God created marriage. So, if you're hustling to marry, you must, number one, ask yourself, are you a godly person? Because one of the purposes of marriage is to raise, you see, you, you want to marry, your only reason for wanting to marry is because you're lonely. But that's not God, that's not what God said. That's why marrying an unbeliever is one of the most serious spiritual crimes you can commit. Because it shows you, you don't even understand why God created marriage. Being desperate for marriage shows you don't understand the purpose why God created marriage. It's not about you alone. So there's godly seed. I want godly seed. That's why it doesn't make sense to marry an unbeliever. 
Because a godly parent and an ungodly parent can't produce godly seed. You plow. What's worse? You produce half cast. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? It takes two godly parents. Two godly parents. Mine and unbeliever is a big crime. Ephesians chapter 2. I think we read it last Sunday also. He said, from verse 1, he said, And you had he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. So, number one, one thing must know about an unbeliever is that he's spiritually dead. He's dead. My wife always, Pastor Milton always shares the example God showed her one time that who goes to a mortuary or a cemetery to go and pick a spouse? Say, oh, he's very handsome. Boy, he's in the mug. He's very rich. Boy, he's in the mug. He's very nice and kind. Boy, he's in the mug. There's nobody that would do that. But why are you doing it spiritually? You claiming to be born again and know the Lord. You are going to a spiritual mug, a nightclub, or wherever, to go and pick an ungodly person because he's nice. See the next thing. So number one, he's dead. Number two, go to the next verse. It says, the next verse, guys. It says, wherein in time past, you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the what? The spirit. That now what? So another thing you need to note is that there's a spirit walking inside anybody that is not born again. Even the people that are born again, the spirit are walking them. That's why it's called the Holy Spirit. The people that are not born again, there's a spirit too walking in them. It's the spirit of the devil. That's just how it works. So how do you carry the Holy Spirit? Go and marry someone that has another spirit. And you want to raise godly seed. They have as much right to deposit their spirit in that child as you have. Are you getting what I'm saying? So it's a big crime for you as a believer to go and marry an unbeliever. It's totally unacceptable. There's a spirit at work. Hey, and the thing about the spirit is that it can stay gentle for a long time. And out of the blues, unexpected, just begin to manifest. I've never watched uh, Michael Jackson bad. Dun, 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 dun. It has been quiet before. Dun, 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 dun. One shoulder first. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Complete madness will just start from nowhere. This is why some people, they, they look like they were married okay for 10 years, then 11th year. Madness just started. They might just have to marry another wife. Just start, I'm tired of you. Because there's a spirit at work. Just because it's lying dumb and doesn't mean it's not there. It's there. To just wake up one day and say, slapper. Dirty slap. <laughs> you know the slap that is not you, they slap, but you shout. <laughs> what? Say, so they slap you. No, no, no. Not that guy they slap, but I feel like. <laughs> Are you here, somebody? The spirit that walketh, there's a spirit that walketh in them. And sometimes that spirit even drags you that you are born again, now drags you back to hell. There are many people that have married unbeliever, their own spiritual lives went down. Because this spiritual race needs consistency. How many of you have tried to go on a diet or tried to do exercise? If your partner is not with you, you say, I want to eat salad. Then your partner wants to eat amala. And they will do and make a mix with pepper stew. <laughs> when they serve your salad and versus eating their own, you know that your salvation is at risk. <laughs> and maybe you can escape it for lunch. And this continues with dinner. This continues next day. It won't be long. For it's, Let me taste one of your yam. <laughs> Let me taste your yam. So this journey needs both of us going together in the same direction. And encouraging ourselves. If by the time you... you that's what the Bible said. Don't be unequally yoked. Together with unbelievers. This is give me that scripture. So don't be unequally yoked together because you can yoke, but if it's an unequal yoke, it's going to be a very difficult journey. Did you give me that scripture? He said, Be ye not what? Unequally yoked together with what? There's no stronger yoke in the marriage. A yoke is what ties two people together. This is for slave trade and, and working in the farm. It ties two animals or two people together. So they said, for you, if you're a believer, you can't be unequally yoked with an unbeliever. Look at what they said. For what fellowship had righteousness with what? See what the Bible, I'm not the one that said this. This is what the Bible is saying about that unbeliever you want to go and marry. People ask me all the time, 
Can I marry somebody that is a, this one? Can I marry, if they are not born again, see what the Bible has answered you. What fellowship can righteousness have with unrighteousness? How can unrighteousness be looking attractive to you? Something is wrong with you. You are so desperate to marry. Unrighteousness is looking attractive. That means you don't know the purpose of marriage. Because if you know that we're supposed to marry to raise godly seed, you won't even find that person attractive in the first place. Are you here, somebody? He said, can I marry somebody from that religion? What are you talking about? Which church will you go to when you get born again? He wants his child to follow him to his own temple. You to want to go to your own. Madness has started. You can't raise godly seed. Look at this. He said, and what communion had what? Light with darkness. Can you see this? I didn't write this. They are calling them darkness. See the next verse. He said, and what concord has what? Christ with what? Belial. Belial is devil. Simple. Belial is Satan. Because they are, they are thinking and ideology and rep- what they represent is different. And what path had he that believed with what? How can, how can somebody be going to hell and all you can do is to marry them? It's the height of selfishness. And marriage is not about selfishness. It's the height of selfishness. You just want to use that person to meet your own need. Whether they go to hell or not, it's not your business. And you're saying, I will convert them. I will marry him and I will convert him. Thank you, convert and marry ministry. <laughs> Many people have tried that nonsense. And they found that they can't convert anybody. You are not the Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Ghost that converts people. You can't convert anybody. Are you here, somebody? You can't convert anybody. It's the Holy Ghost that converts people. If you can convert people, go and convert all the terrorists in the world. Go and convert all the Yahoo boys. Go and convert all the prostitutes. You can't convert anybody. Because there are people that actually ask me, but I'm dating a Yahoo boy. Can I marry him? Are you okay? Are you even okay? Somebody has made it clear that he's a, he's a fraudster and a thief. And you want to go and marry him. You want to use money you, you stole from other families to take care of your own family. It can't be well with you. It cannot. And it's not a cause, it's a fact. So, they are making other families miserable to make you happy. And you'll be, you, you'll be comfortable in that situation. You'll be okay that when somebody's child can't eat and that money you took from your like own children too will eat. You are playing with the person that his job is to kill, to steal, and to destroy. That's who you are playing with. Because he will also come and steal from your house. And may he not steal the life of somebody. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Can I marry a Yahoo boy? Can I marry a Ron's girl? What are you saying? What are you even saying? And I'm not joking. The Christians ask me these questions. I'm not joking. You, you know that they don't understand marriage. They think marriage is just about a two of us who this weather for two. It's raining. We'll just cut it. Think that's what it's about? After all those uh, mushy feelings are gone, the reality will there. Can marry an ungodly partner. Two of you must be godly. Not just that they go to church. Oh, look, it's not just that they go to church I'm talking about. A godly person is living a life that you can see. It's not that he goes to church. That's not enough. Anybody can come to church. We have thrusters in church. Some of them are here. We have lost girls here. They're here. And it's good to let them keep coming until the world changes them. So we don't drive them. We encourage them to keep coming. But you can't marry him. He has no job. No visible job you can see. Six phones. I don't know who he's calling on none of them. <laughs> is somebody getting what I'm saying? He has all the starter pack of Yahoo boy. <laughs> because they have starter pack. <laughs> so he's a godly person. Not just that he goes to church. Godly spouse. Are you here, somebody? Godly spouse. So, so two can't work together except they be agreed. If you're a born-again Christian, it should be obvious. You can't be unequally yoked together with an unbeliever. An unbeliever can never raise godly seed. What would they teach your kids? What would they represent to your kids? Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Number one, purpose of marriage is to raise godly seed. A family that can pray together. A family. See, with the madness in the world, God's plan is that that family will be like a safe haven. When your children go to school and see men and men marry and see madness, see rape, see, uh, see cheating, see stealing, when they come home, they can get an idea 
of what a godly life looks like from father and mother. Please take note. They didn't say to raise an educated child. They say a godly child. They didn't say to raise a sophisticated child. They say a godly child. Yeah, because you know many people say, oh, well, I'm going to Canada. Why? It's for my children. Canada is heaven, Abby. I'm not saying you should not travel. Those of you that want to travel, please. I'm just trying to say, can your focus be a bit on their spiritual well-being? Do you consider that at all? When you're picking anything? Some people, they want to pick school for their kids. They're looking for the most expensive. They're looking for the one that has rich people's children. So which one? Which one will give us class? That's not what we consider. When we are picking children, school for our children, we're looking at their spiritual... My, my daughter is in boarding school. Boarding school is, is one of the best in the country, but it's owned by a church. One Sunday, we asked her, how was... Did you produce service? Yes, service. They say, I said, how was it? She said, that day was five hours. I said, it's good for you. Because <laughs> at this stage, don't you even deal with your energy? It's a very strong church that owns the school. That's what I would consider. Not, I can send my children abroad anywhere to study. Yes, they will come back with phone, but they will pick other things from that culture. Especially when there's no adult supervision. When there's no godly supervision there. So when you're planning, they didn't say raise an educated kid. They didn't say raise a successful kid. Because there are many Christians I see, their children are successful, in quotes. Only that they are still in the claws of Satan. And if they die today, they will roast in hell forever. You know hell is not uh, five years. It's not prison sentence. You know, it's not that you do 10 years, you come back, then we'll talk to you. Mm -mm. If, so, so if you have a son or grandson or cousin or whatever that is on his way to hell, he might be successful in music, successful in acting, successful in banking. If he's, if he's not born again, it means if he dies today, he's gone forever or not for one week. Not five years prison sentence. So, but we don't mind. We celebrate them. He's it's, 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 it's successful. They didn't say raise successful children. They say raise godly children. Do you know I watched a video of one of the missionaries that came to Nigeria, Pa Elton. I'm sure myself seen that video, Pa Elton, and I watched the one that his wife, I think his wife is still alive. He's a white guy that left his developed country, came to Nigeria early years, I think, what years? I don't know what years. 1930s. But he has been here for, he has been in Nigeria for a long time. He's dead now, but the wife is still alive. He's been in Nigeria for a long time. And all the revival you see in Nigeria, it was one of those that prayed it through and taught people like Abishab Idahosa and Co. All the big fathers of the faith that have even passed. He's one that discipled them. And he has been praying about the revival in Nigeria since. Now, in the eyes of the world, that guy is not successful. I mean, a white man is living somewhere in, in the, not even in Lagos, he's living somewhere in the West, if or somewhere, I don't know. Eh? Or should State somewhere. Is that successful? When you get to heaven, though, your favorite music artist might not be born. If he's not born again, he'll be in hell. This guy that you don't know will be among those that will be well respected. Do you see how God sees success? So I want to send my children to school. It shouldn't be the, it's not about the most expensive school. It's not about the most sophisticated school. It's that this school, is there, any, is, there, is, there, is there a room for spiritual development? It's not only basketball you check. Do they have a good basketball team? Thank you. Do they have good fellowship? Or he can be the best basketball star that went to hell. Is somebody get what I'm saying? So you see why you should marry a godly spouse. These are conversations only godly people can have. Is somebody get what I'm saying? Godly seed. They didn't say educated seed. I want my children to have the best education, but I will always consider their spiritual well-being. I'm careful about moving to any city that has no strong churches. Are you here, somebody? Because some people just want to relocate. It's not heaven. I warn you in the name of the Lord. I have no issue with relocating. Even me, if I have chance, I can relocate. I'm saying, uh, of course, you know I'm not really looking. I'm just, I'm just trying to make you know that, look, my issue is not with your relocation. But please, think like a spiritual person. Just want to go to a town, no, but no church, no nothing. Just heaven. You think that's heaven. May you return with your children in safely. Because Lot did the same thing. This city that Lot went to, he didn't return with anything. He lost his wife, lost his business, lost his family. By the time it was done, he was left alone. Everything destroyed. But he went to Canada. So that was the Canada of that time. In terms of it was a green land, it was a flourishing land. My brother, I sit down, I'm still talking. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. Rain is falling. Let's talk. 
Are you here, somebody? Yeah, we're discussing something important. So Sodom and Gomorrah was the prospering land that time. Everything looked green. Everything looked green. He lost everything there. So calm down. Think of spiritual side. And look, with all the people living, it means there will be more job opportunities. Mm, say all the IT people of bank have left. They will train on that one. Somebody that didn't have job before now. They will have job. We are cuckoo to plenty. Are you here? Who don't have they will sell their car cheaper than they bought it. That means somebody that didn't have car last year. They will have car. Mm. So don't let it you know Nigerians are too peer pressure disturbs us too much. All my friends have gone. Uh, so you want to go because they are going. Don't do things called peer pressure. Every destiny is customized. Customized. So ask God what he has planned for you and your children. Don't just carry them to a land that they won't hear about Jesus. There are some of those countries that they don't know who Jesus is. I'm telling you, they are, I had one of our church members that located in one country in, in UK, one state city in UK, many years, not today, many years ago. He said, when they do evangelism, they are, those people know David Beckham. But when you tell them about Jesus, they don't, they don't even know that. They don't know what Jesus is. Not even who. They don't know what. They've never heard about it. So that's the reason you want to carry your children. Educated children. That will soon run mad. Please consider spiritual foundations. Asking, is there a church there? For you just carry them. Say, so raise godly seed. We are too peer pressured in Nigeria. Are you getting what I'm saying? As people are moving, it's a time to prosper. Some of you that God didn't tell to go dig in now. Start buying properties, buy things. As people are going, buy, buy, buy. It's an opportunity. Don't just carry that panicking. Everybody is going. When everybody was getting uh, COVID, did you, would you bother you? Did you want to get? <laughs> Peer pressure. So everybody's going. It doesn't matter. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Some people will still build this country. Hallelujah. Raising godly children. Godly seed. Godly seed. You know, people say, I'm doing it for my children. Everything they say, oh, this is what we're working for. We're working for my children. Please stay and read the Bible with them. You are going to work 2 a.m., coming back 12 midnight. I'm doing it for my children. But those children don't know God. You're not doing it for your children, sir. Your children will prefer you stay at home and read the Bible with them. Do devotion with them. Thank God for my wife. She's, she's a more structured person. So she makes sure there's Bible reading in my house every day for the kids. And we do Bible. And sometimes they call me to come and do. But she does more of it. But I do. My own, when I come, you know, it's groove. My wife, very serious, just read the Bible. This is what the Bible says. What do you learn? What do you... I mean, when I come, if it's feet washing, I say, everybody go and bring bucket. I want to... We are going to wash feet today. Everybody was participating to wash everybody's feet. <laughs> and Anne was there. The <laughs> Anne was in the house. They did it. So she didn't even wash her feet. She washed everybody wash feet. I demonstrated. Do you get what I'm saying? But you are putting Bible in them small, small. Because they raise up a child in the way that they should go. You say, when they depart, they will not forget it. You are working morning tonight. You say, I'm doing it for them. You're not doing it for them, you're doing it for yourself. Because if you're doing it for them, you can take a lesser job. You can move to a lesser place where the rent is less, where you can have time for your kids. That's the best investment. And you can mentor them spiritually. Not just send them to the best school. No school can mentor your children like you would do it. No house set can do it like you would do it. It's customized. You know what you want to teach them. The house will do to their best of ability. Today, my children call TV TV. Because one of the ladies that was taking care of them when they were young, she, she couldn't speak English when she came. She was just calling TV. TV. This is five years ago. Or thereabout. My children now are a bit grown, but they still all, they pronounce everything fine, but when it comes to TV, they call it what? TV. So, if you think one house up is going to teach your kids for you, <laughs> your kids will start saying TV. <laughs> Nobody's going to do it for you. Are you here, somebody? Uh, no school is going to do it for you. You have to stay home there. And if you say you're doing it for the kids, you want to travel to another country, it's not for the kids, it's you. You're afraid of Nigeria will scatter. 
If you love the kids, please read Bible with them. Bring them to church. Plant them in a good church. Support your church. We want to build that church building now. Support your church. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Relocating is not heaven. The way Nigerians are doing it as if it's heaven. And when they get there, they're hustling, they go and meet. Literally have no life. They land hustling. Three jobs, no church. And this news reaching me is that many of these people that locate don't go to church. They were serious in church when they left, in churches. In Africa, when they left, when they got abroad, they didn't have, they don't have time to attend services. Because they, 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 the culture there is even against religion. They, because Sunday people walk on Sunday. Here, everybody knows in the world, no matter how angry they are, they know that Sunday, even demons go to church <laughs> on Sunday. Everybody knows that. So, it's not a big deal to tell your employer here that you can't come down Sunday. But there, it's not, they don't even think about it. They put everybody in every day. So, most people can't attend church one month straight. If you don't go to church, it means your children too won't go. Maybe you might have enough spiritual sense to resist the culture. Your children don't go. So what, what I hear is that most people that leave Nigeria that are, were serious in church, even workers, even pastors, when they did there, they're not even Christians. Because the way Christianity is, it fades with time. You don't go to church for one month. You don't have any Christian friends. All your friends are alcoholics and drunkards. By three months, four months, you don't even know your Christian name. Are you here, somebody? So what's the number one purpose for marriage? So just like animals, when animals want to breed their mates, they look for a, a mate that will, will raise. I can never forget. I, I'm a dog person. I've told you this story many times. So I bought a dog. I told you I stopped buying puppies. So I bought an adult dog. It was a barbell. Massive dog. I told you about that. That's a dog that broke my fence. Massive dog. This high. Brindle. It's like a tiger. Very massive. I never, I've never seen a dog that big that time. His name was Dipsy. That's how I used to bark. Massive dog. And it was a female dog. Uh -huh, thank you. It's handkerchief. You know we're not going anywhere. Uh -huh. It's now you are in the spirit. You are now a godly seed. <laughs> uh -huh. So we bought that dog. Dog was very expensive. You know, then you know, then they, they, they used to import they imported the dog from South Africa. Then it wasn't common to import dogs, so this was a very exotic dog. But now people import dogs, but that time it was only, only you could count people that were importing dogs. So it was a very exotic dog, big dog, Brabu, Brindle. Um, the, I think that time the cost of that dog was supposed to be around 500 or so thousand. That time. So this would be like 5 or 10 million now. You know? And the person gave me at a discount of about 200k or something. I can't remember now. But there was a discount. And the person said the reason why they're selling at that discounted price, which was still a big price, <laughs> was because they found out that when the dog is on heat, now those of you that are into dog breed, you know what I'm talking about. When the dog is on heat, it means it's ready for a, a male partner to conceive. When the dog is on heat, um, part of his, his um, inner parts come out a bit. And that person that imported that dog said he intentionally doesn't want to breed the dog. That he can breed it, but it means that this default will also spread with the other puppies, the offspring that come out of it, and it will continue spreading like that. So he said, that's why he's selling it cheap. He made me sign legal documents that I will not breed the dog. Do you understand? Somebody was so interested in not allowing a dog with fault give offspring. Dog. I said, who will, who will complain? He made me sign that he will take it up if I breed that dog. If a human being can be interested in dog not spreading with default, why do you think God wants more sinners? Why do you think God wants more mad people? More drug addicts? He doesn't want more. So he wants that any child that will come into this world will have the safety of two godly parents. So even when challenges come in that, life, in that child's life, the child has enough support, enough protection, that that child can learn about God without going to any church. That child will learn about God. That child will see the love of God in the way the father treats the mother and the way the mother treats the father. You know, marriage is about representing God. We'll share that as we go on because it's one of the purposes of marriage. Somebody getting what I'm saying? So to open your two eyes and marry someone that is not born again and is not living a godly life, it's the, it's the most selfish thing you can do. 
It's the most selfish thing you can do. Are you here, somebody? You are doing your, your unborn generation a disservice. Do you know how beautiful it is to have parents that pray in tongues? Do you know how beautiful it is to have parents that live by the word of God? Parents that have faith. Parents that teach you how to trust God. Teach you how to pray. Do you know how beautiful it is? You are not dealing with ancestral causes. Most of us when we go born again, what was really in our time is ancestral causes. Everybody came with ancestral causes. Most of our parents that generation were involved in some fetish stuff or the other. Some of you said you are still dealing with those things. That they planted something. Do you know my children will grow and never need to break any ancestral cause? Never. All they will have to deal with is generational blessing. Not generational cause. I thought you'd be happier than that. I'm telling you. All they will have to deal with is a generational blessing. Not a generational cause. When we're young, ah, breaking generational cause, a big service. When they say to next Sunday is breaking of causes Sunday. Hey, everybody go through. Everybody has one cause they're trying to break. But my children, they will not have any, they will know that there's such a thing. Only generational blessing. Only generational blessing. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Will you help make this world a better place? By raising godly seed and marrying godly people. That will be your portion. In the name of Jesus. If you are involved in a relationship that with an ungodly person, I release grace for you to be broken in the name of Jesus. I've seen too many ungodly people, two ungodly people trying to have a godly marriage. It can never happen. Two ungodly people trying to have what? A godly marriage. I see it all the time. Two of you are alcoholics now. Two of you are drinking. I, mean, I don't know. They haven't Christians here that they have alcohol in your house. What's wrong with you? Godly seed. My children have never had to encounter that. Why? Why are you playing with those kind of things? Two ungodly people want to have it. They are praying for a godly man, but they are two. What of them are ungodly? You are living an ungodly life. Like you, are, you are dating, but you are living an ungodly life. I mean, it doesn't even... You are, you, are, you, are, you are meeting in bar. You are drinking. But you say, the Lord... Have you ever seen anywhere people are drinking and they are speaking space, saying spiritual things? You see where people are drinking gin and saying, you know, John 3. Have you seen before in your life? What are you, what are, what are you meddling with, with, with evil for? So, but pastor, there's nowhere the Bible says we should not drink, but there's nowhere the Bible says not take cocaine. There's nowhere the Bible says not take weed. We don't take things that intoxicate us because only one spirit must control us. Anytime you open the door for another spirit to control you, you are stepping out of the spirit of God controlling you. That's what they call alcohol, it's spirit. It seeks to control. It's not there for fun. So you, 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 you are both Christians. I don't, know, I don't know how people do it. As in, among yourself, it's okay. You put, you put shark. As you are both born again, you go to church, and you guys, go, <laughs> you, are, you are your fiancé. You don't put smell of hype. You put shark. And you say you are, you want, and no, there's nothing wrong with this, but if you say you want to build a godly seed, you're already on the wrong path. Because two ungodly people, Godly is not going to church. It's, it's a behavior. It's not church going. Godly. It's a way of behaving. Like God. Have you seen God drinking before? Just see him open small stout. Relax. I'm going to talk. Just sit down. What? Give me. I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to be here. You can't beat me. Pastor K, please. <laughs> you don't want to read it. They don't write it. I'll read it out. Bible says anything that he did must be exposed. <laughs> Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Look, I, 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 I see too much of godliness among young people, and they are claiming they want to build godly home. They want to put one leg in the club, one leg in church. Even on, if you go on social media, see the kind of pictures they are posting, see the kind of dresses they are wearing. I you say you are a Christian, you are a member of a, you are a department. Yeah, you go to club freely. How are you even comfortable among all these people going to hell? You are comfortable? Your spirit must be dead. The way you should be weeping. You should be weeping and say, Oh God, save these people. You are dancing with them. These people going to hell. Say you want to raise godly. These are the jokes people are cracking. You are living an ungodly life. You want a godly home. 
I, you know, you start with ungodly life, then later when the marriage starts rocking, you never say, Pastor, cancel him. I can't turn an ungodly man you brought to a godly man inside marriage. Can't turn an ungodly woman you went to marry to become suddenly godly inside marriage. That's what many of you want us to do as pastors. We're not going to do it. Are you here, somebody? Let the foundation be godly from beginning. Two real Christians. Once he says or she says something off key, you know he's not a Christian. So let's go and just settle down. Let's, let's step down with small stout. You step out of the relationship. So it's an ungodly soul. Because he's going to drag you to hell. Say, yeah, let's just lie. Let's just set them on that thing. You can't raise a godly family like that. Do you understand what I'm saying, Sha? Were you blessed this morning?